always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming to Next. I'm so happy we're here in person with one another yet again. Uh, so much company from our customers. Love, love speaking with our customers, and there's so much information, so I appreciate you taking time with our session. I know I've heard so much on generative AI, AI, and we will be talking a little bit about that today, but topic that's near and dear is hearing from our customers the journey that they've gone through and how it impacts their people, their culture, considerations around technology, security, and really understanding the decision process initially as to why they decided to partner with Google, specifically Google Workspace from productivity and collaboration, and then take us through some questions that explain in their words these elements of culture, security, and, and more specifically people and the impact of that change and what it might have meant to their cultures. And so with that, am I aiming it in the right direction? <laughs> we will be going through a panel discussion today. If we have time, we will do a Q&A session at the end. But to start off, we're going to have questions directly for our, our customers here today. I'd like to welcome Rajnesh Avtar. He's the CIO of HCL Software. Nancy Mihalik, VP of Digital, Digital Workplace, not Workspace, Workplace, a common spirit. And we have Adam Arrett, Senior Vice President, Employee Enablement Engineering for Equifax. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate Not your pleasure. time. All right, let's jump right in. So if we look at cultural transformation is the, the title of the session. We won't have time to go through all these questions. I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between you if that's okay. But first one is, what was your organization's transformation aha moment that made you realize you needed to change how work was being done for your company? And sometimes it's not necessarily a technology reason. Uh, it can be a number of factors. But I'm going to start with Adam at the end. Sure. So from the cultural transformation side, I think for us, it was really, we were in a position where it was time to really make a cultural transformation for the company. And it was, you know, we, it was time for us to shift the way we think about a lot of things. And part of that was collaboration. So it was really a combination of factors. Um, but certainly shifting on, you know, how we, how our employees work together, how we collaborate, you know, stopping the, version 23 of an attachment to an email, which is just such a waste of time for so many people and really, you know, driving the culture of collaboration and community and, and making that pervasive across the company is really as part of our overall, um, you know, enterprise transformation, we really wanted to, to shift think, the mindset of, of a lot of our uh, uh, employee base. Excellent. You feel you've achieved that to a certain degree? Absolutely. Um, we, you know, we we have a significant uh, uptake on the platform. Uh, we have about um, a hundred thousand ish um, chat messages a day across uh, all mobile, desktop uh, devices. Um, we have uh, several terabytes of of. Uh, data in, in docs now in, dri in Drive. Um, so it is it is our core platform for the company, for collaboration. Um, and you know we have really great feedback from our users. Do you feel you could have achieved the same thing with your existing partner at the time? Um, absolutely not. Um, so it, there, there's no way, I, I mean, Workspace by far is the best document collaboration platform that's available on the market today. Uh, and I think that is the core of what drives um, the, the change in mindset and the, and the change in how people think about how they can work. Being able to work on a slide or a document at your kid's soccer game in the afternoon on your mobile device is such a shift in how people can work that I, I just don't think the, the you know, streamlined ability to do that is available anywhere else. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. I'm going to switch gears here. So there's always a conversation. I have conversations with organizations looking to do this about change constantly. Change has come up in every single conversation I've had for folks that are considering making some kind of pivot or switch. So we commonly hear this and moving uh, a platform or a new way of, of working 
is a common challenge, uh, in, especially to an organization's culture, right? They think that this is going to potentially negatively impact their people. They can't shift with the change. There's a perception that, I, I don't know, that their users don't, do not have the ability uh, to do this. What's your reaction to this uh, common objection? I'm going to start with you, Rajnesh. So maybe let me give a brief background of why we made the change and who we are. Uh, so I'm part of a company called HCL Software. We are a small uh, organization within a larger HCL tech IT services company. And we wanted to set our own brand okay, and our own identity. And we are changing almost all the platforms within our organization. Collaboration was the first one that we are attempting, moving from your competition onto GWS. Um, so I think it was very, very important for us to have a new platform with all the new capabilities, and especially, as Adam was saying, around supercharging this collaboration, right? simplifying all the security rules that we have within the organization, uh, bringing in the new technology, all the Gen AI stuff that we're talking about in this conference. Uh, so for us, it wasn't about um, the technology. It was about the change that people have to go through. Right? And the question that you were asking, we think people might not like change, and that is real. It is true. Change is difficult. Right? It really is not about technology so much as it is about people. And if we can be very clear to them, so there are three Cs, right? The clarity of what, why we are doing it, when are we doing it, how are we doing it, the communication. Can we continue to communicate and over-communicate with our people? And finally, the commitment at all levels of the organization. So those are three Cs that are helping us move in this journey. I love it. Um, I'm going to ask the same question to you, Nancy, but maybe a little bit about yourself and common sure, spirit. Absolutely. Well, I'm Nancy Mihalik, and I'm the System Vice President of Digital Workplace and Service Management at Common Spirit Health. And Common Spirit Health was created through a merger of Dignity Health and Catholic Healthcare Initiatives in early 2019. We're a healthcare system of 140 hospitals, 1,000 um, care sites, and about 21 states. And as part of that merger, and as well as other M&A activity prior to our merger into Common Spirit, um, there was a lot. Uh, we ended up with uh, 13 separate email environments. So for us, it was a matter of looking across those environments. They were not standard. Many of them were end of life. And some of the most simple task of being able to schedule a meeting with your peers or associates now across Common Spirit was very difficult because one, there was not a common global address and there was no calendar interrupt. So there was not ability to see when someone might be available for that meeting. And so it was really important for us to really look at Google Workspace and use that as a journey, not to replicate the way we were working before, but more about creating a new environment, a new culture, transforming the way we work, and most importantly, creating that unified single platform for communication and collaboration. I mean, Adam nailed it. It's all about the collaboration. One of our core values at Common Spirit is collaboration, and if really engaging with uh, Google Workspace was allowing us to really accelerate that collaboration post-merger as one common spirit. Excellent, thank you. I'm gonna to move to the next topic. Um, so this one, Adam, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with you again. What are some of your goals around cultural transformation and what role does technology play in this? And again, I'd like you to give a little about yourself as well as Equifax if we can. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, so about myself, yeah, I've been at Equifax for about five years running the bulk of our internal applications. We have about 24,000 end users. Uh, prior to this, I've had similar, similar roles at a number of organizations. I've done uh, a workspace uh, implementation. This is my third one. Uh, I've also done a couple other platform implementations on the collaboration side. Certainly around cultural transformation, and I, th I think we've touched on that a little bit, but you know, I think technology can really be used as a lever to drive cultural transformation. It really, and it's a top-down thing, right? It's got to come from the top. Um, you know, the users need to understand that everybody's all in. We, we, you know, we called our program all in with Google. Uh, we had our Google champions at every site. Uh, you know, the larger sites had several that got to preview the uh, the platform before we went live. We did. We went live in a big bang weekend. We we moved about 21,000 users in two days. Um, and, you know, I think 
once people understand that this is happening and, and they, they know this is going to happen, you know, it's, if they take it seriously, they understand, you know, what we can do. And that's how you get your best uptake, right? Because when it comes to cultural transformation, the, the hard part is never the technology. If it's the technology, something's wrong, it's always the people. The hard part is the people and, and getting that cultural change in there and getting that change management done. So, you know, having a, a key plan around that uh, is, is really important, but certainly, you know, driving that forward. And then it, I think people get to it as part of the cultural change. You can always do the next iteration. You can, you can always just update your current, you know, your existing platform to the next version. But I think when you have a complete shift like this and you shift into a kind of a cloud first, you know, really collaborative platform, it shows the, the user base that the company and the, they then are invested in it and they're all in as well. Rajesh, what's your reaction? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, while I completely agree, right? P people change is important, but then technology helps. If you look at this technology, what GWS is bringing to us, it's actually enabling a lot of the barriers that people have. I love that version 23. I was actually going to say version 27, but yeah, version 26 or 23. Um, and I think the other key part of this is, how do we get new employees into the organizations? So if you look at all the young talent that's coming in, every single person is so familiar with this platform. So it just makes the onboarding of the employees so much easier. And the final thing I'll say is, it also makes it very easy if you have good partners. So Google has been an amazing partner, and thank you, Pat, thank you, Sumedha, thank you, the Google team, right? And Sears, uh, who's been the implementation partner for us. So it really, really helps. Fantastic, thank you. Sorry, frog in my throat. <laughs> um, what have you changed in terms of process, culture, business impact, and Nancy, I'm gonna ask you this question. Well, post our migration to Google Workspace, one of the things that we implemented was the center of excellence. And it's one thing to go live day one, but we knew that we are going to have to really help coach our people on how to think differently and how to use Google Workspace. And I can remember my partners here and doing a presentation on the center of excellence. I'm like, oh, we don't need that. We don't have time for that. And it was a lifesaver. Um, and I'm so glad that they took us along that journey. But it really, when I looked back over that 10 month period past our migration to Google Workspace, within that 10 month period, we tracked over 500 requests for help you know, from our customers saying, hey, I don't know what to do. Most of it was knowledge gaps, um, but then some of it was like, I do this now, how can I do it in Google? And that's really what we wanted to help our uh, associates with across Common Spirit is to think differently. Let's leverage this, you know, collaboration tool in ways that we've never thought possible. And so that center of excellence was really that that, air, that team that really helped drive our adoption and usage and really help our people to think differently on the way they work today and how they can work differently using Google. No, 100%, and I love that you branded it Center of Excellence. We've seen it with many customers who've done this. They have their own branding around it, but the fact that, and you said it, Adam, earlier, the technology is, is actually the easy part. It's understanding the gaps for your, your folks, meeting them where they are, and understanding that they did it a certain way for a very long time and they cannot yet realize the benefits of just shifting the mindset a little bit. Were you wanting to add a little bit there? Yeah, I was telling uh, Nancy earlier, you know, everybody wants change, but when change starts to happen, everybody hates it. Okay. So how do we ensure and make sure that they, we bring them as part of this journey? Right? Can we create small videos right, for, from our own employees who can talk about the positive? So the one thing that I've always emphasized on, focus on the positives because we can easily get into a rat hole of trying to say it's an apples to apples comparison, which is never the case in technology. Good point. Yes, and I'm going yeah. to jump in real quick because we talked about change management and that was key to our success for our go live, right? Was change management. We all talked about the technologies behind the scenes. We're technologists. That's the easy part of what we do. But it was all about the change management. And to me, the center of excellence was just a continuation of that change management, but it was a different flavor and a different type, and it was really more hands-on. Uh, my product manager is here, and they did a fantastic job of creating different ways to, to continue to help our um, 
associates and all across Common Spirit during that migration. I mean, we talk about interactive showcases where people are coming to us, showing us how they're using Google now versus us showing them. So it was just a continuation of that important change management um, and just calling it a center of excellence just added a different flavor to it. Yeah, and I think you can push it down through the org too, and I think you can really you know, sell it on the what's in it for me, right? Everyone's, it's always about the what's in it for me, and I think where well, that helps. And I think, you know, through having it, you know, pervasively in the org with a Google Guide program or some sort of center of excellence, right, it really helps drive home the, you know, here's all the cool things you can do. Like, you can do this, like, at your kid's soccer game or while you're in the grocery store. Like, you can have chat that actually works and has a history to it. and. Uh, all the great advantages you know you can have there and really sell that story to the users. No, 100%. Um, similar situation you're saying when users come to you. I remember going live with a large retailer and we came to their, uh, it was like an IT symposium a few months after they went live and I had a lineup of people that wanted to ask me very specific questions about how to. I used to do uh, you moved my cheese kind of things, right? We attended a year later and what was what I loved about it was the excitement of people approaching me with innovative ways that they've changed their own processes and workflows. So you write that excitement, it starts to get viral because they're sharing. So that's those are all We things. actually created a game as well, the Google Thon. Uh, where you know people could get creative and come up with their own ideas and so we did that twice and it was very successful and kind of kept continuing that momentum and that excitement. Our, our program was called Get Going With Google. You were all in with Google. Yeah. We were Get Going With Google. So it was just a matter of gamifying it a little bit to continue that momentum and that excitement. I love that. Um, it's the elephant in the room. I think it wouldn't be a presentation if I didn't talk about AI and generative AI. Would we, wouldn't we all agree? Okay. Um, some amazing announcements we've seen the launch that we saw yesterday with Duet AI, what, I know it's relatively new, and I'll let whoever wants to answer first, but are you envisioning ways that this will improve the situation of your users, potentially confuse them for the first little bit? What are your plans, feelings, thoughts? Feel free to share. Who wants to start? I, I can start, yeah. Okay. I mean, for us, um, we, we are getting all in, in AI. So everything that we do, whether it is our products, whether it is the way we interact from an HR perspective with our employees, our marketing, our central functions, we are getting all in. We're still very early in the journey, right? As I said, even the GWS migration is, we're in the middle of it right now. Uh, but it's very, very important that the way every employee experiences technology is going to change. Right? The seller is not going to get into a CRM system. Right? Everything will be conversational. Uh, the HR, em, as an employee, right, you don't want to go to an HR person to try to find out certain policies. Everything should be just type a question and get the answer. So we are, as an organization, moving towards that, and I think it's going to be a big part of our future. Excellent. Any comments from either of you? Yeah, I think on the AI side, you know, I'm very interested to see what we can do with it. We have uh, quite a few test users right now uh, using it. I'm one of them. Um, and, you know, I think really, and we're targeting them with training and, and surveys right now. Hopefully we'll get usage data from Google soon. It would be nice. Um, and, uh, you know, really understanding who benefits the most, right, and, and where that ROI is, right? I think, particularly in my mind, I'm thinking things like the marketing space and creating campaigns, things like that, possibly on the support side as well. Um, and, and auto replies, and it's great for everybody, like for our program managers and, and product managers for meeting, summarization, and note, note taking. So, I, you know, I think it's one of those things. I think it's, uh, I think it's the internet, 1992. Um, we're all on Prodigy and CompuServe, and we need to figure out where it's going to go. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely excited to see, you know, the, the new things that you know we can't even think about right now that it can unlock and help people with. And I know that, uh, it, you know, if there's something that can be taken advantage of and some synergies found, our users will help us figure out a way to find it. So I'm, I'm excited for that. That makes sense. Um, I guess. Was, yeah, there was Keep just going. an interesting, funny story that I wanted to add. You know, when I first started playing with uh, GWS and AI, with Duet AI, I actually wanted to respond to somebody who has invited me for a meeting. And I wanted to change the time. And I asked the prompt to say, please change the time to 2 o'clock. The prompt changed it. The response was great. 
and I sent it. The person responded back saying, wonderful, I can meet you, but why are you changing it to tomorrow? And I hadn't realized that the, it had changed the time, right, from today to tomorrow. So it's very important that, you know, AI is great, generative AI is great, but it's my responsibility as an individual to make sure that I verify what it has generated. So it's just a simple, small example, but I think that's very crucial. 100%, and as we talk through this, there's always, the, we're referring to as the person in the middle, right? Uh, we're not, it's not going to be replacing someone's job. Uh, there was Ranjan Roy who was speaking with us yesterday from Adormi's VP of Strategy, and they put out uh, about 80, 80 products in a month where they have to write copy for it, to write descriptions of products. And this was one person's job, one person in their organization who was obsessing over this. But they were able to cut what was so much, so much work every single day, four hours, down to an hour a week, which was unbelievable. So the, to your point, Adam, you can find these use cases, but if you lean into them, and check your work, right? Definitely check your work. Work in progress, for sure. So, Nancy, I'm gonna ask you this question. What's the one piece of advice you'd give other leaders who may be working through their own cultural transformation? Well, Adam hit on it earlier, leader advocacy. I mean, we had support from the, our CEO, and I mean, he didn't even did a video of our get going with Google campaign, and it really got the whole organization excited. But you've got to have that top-down support. We would not be successful without it. Um, so to me, when you think about cultural change, now that you know we've gone through the change on Google Workspace, still now elevating that and making sure our leaders are fully engaged and supporting us on continuing on this journey. But I cannot, uh, just that leader advocacy and support from the highest level is the utmost important. I would completely agree. The successful projects we've seen, they obviously have leadership support from all sides, so it's a very good point. Any other comments on those? Um, for me, as I said, the three C's are important. It's the clarity of why we are making the change, how we are doing it, when are we doing it, why. Um, the second was all about communication. Right? And the third one, to Nancy's point, right? it's about the commitment. Now, while we had the top commitment all the time, right? now as we are getting into it, it really is about getting the bottoms up from the employee commitment, getting them to share what they're doing and building that excitement. Yeah, surfacing and celebrating those stories, Absolutely. It's, it, it becomes viral, right? Infectious, uh, if you will, 100%. Yeah, I'd say on the on that side, I mean, you know, we would we would have a weekly newsletter, kind of a countdown, and then the last week we'd have a daily when we were getting ready for our Big Bang rollout. You know, I think another piece on you know preparing to go through that transformation and setting up for success, I think it's always important to frame it as a cultural transformation, as a transformation in how people can work and not to frame it as a cost save or something like that, that it's only benefiting the business side. Because if you, if you frame it there, I think you really lose a lot of the momentum you can get as part of it. So it's always kind of what, what's in it for me, how can we drive it forward, um, and really show that, that cultural shift. Absolutely. Um, and I didn't, I didn't have this in here, but we talked previously, and Adam, you and I had chatted yesterday. Were there any interesting byproducts from a user experience and even security models or gains that you experienced as an organization? Well, I mean, certainly from our side, you know, I'm, I'm very focused and my team's very focused on being platform focused and simplicity, right? Security through simplicity in a lot of ways, right? So we are, you know, all in on, on Google Workspace. That is our only chat client. That is our only document client for document collaboration. Um, email, et cetera. So it really allows us to focus, you know, where our security posture needs to be and working with our security team. Um, you know, I think that really helps you know, drive that forward as well. Fantastic. Hey.